Okay guys, next up I want to show you the uh, next album uh, with the clasp envelope. Um, uh, the original one was this one from the original video where I did the hard, the hard binding and slid the envelopes onto the uh, hinges. Well this time I'm going to do it differently because I've already done a couple with the hard bindings already. So I'm going to be using page 21 and then I'm also going to be using page 38 which is the covers for the clasp envelope and the standard envelope. So I am going to be using this paper line. It is Mumbi Mumb Sheets. I'm guessing that's the name brand. And it's, I don't know if it has a name, but it says Me and My Big Ideas, but I don't think that's the name of it. Maybe it's Hello Beautiful. That might be the name of it. Um, but it's really pretty, and since it's really close to Valentine's Day, I thought it would be really um, a sweet little, little yeah. album to make. So what I did was I pulled some pages out, and um, I've tried to prepare just about as much as I can. I've already prepared five of the envelopes, so this is the sixth one. And this was an accident too. I don't know if you, yep, you can see it. You see all the glitter on there? Well, I didn't want to send this through my printer. I don't know what I was thinking. I'd cut all my pages down to eight and a half by 11 and I just piled them all together and printed off six envelopes. Well, it worked. I couldn't believe it, it worked. My printer is a laser printer. So um, I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but it worked this time. So what I thought I would do is I would show you how to trim this out and show you what I'm going to do. Um, let me grab a few things and I'll be right back. I think this album too would be a quick and easy one to make if you need to make a last minute gift or something for someone. Um, it's really easy to put together and you just print them all out and cut them all out and fold them and all that and it's just really easy to do. I'm sorry I'm having camera troubles again today. I'm not sure. If it's this crazy weather, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, so I'm just going to trim this out. So this is a Fiskars Rotary Precision uh, Paper Trimmer. So I'm just going to go ahead and start trimming this out. Uh, first I go through and I cut all the straight edges that I can. Um, just to make it easier. And let me move that out of the way. And then I get my, my scissors out and just trim the rest of it off. And this paper has white on the back side, so I could have, if I wanted to, I could have printed off one of the patterns on the back side. Um, but I didn't. I'm just going to ink them. And then I'm going to take my, this is a quarter of an inch uh, fun foam. It's the really thick fun foam. Um, I just use that to do my scoring. That way it makes it, um, makes it a more deep impression, a more deep, a deeper impression. Um, than just putting it on a flat surface. And this paper's kind of thin, so I have to be careful not to tear through it. So, let's see. So then you just want to go score all the lines. See, I just tore through it right there. But that's okay. All right, and then just want to go ahead and prep everything Oops. before you uh, ink and glue it. Just like that. Let me move this out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and ink a couple pieces, or a couple pieces, oh, this one I didn't, didn't score that very well. Let me see if I can fix it. That looks better. I was off a little bit on my scoring. My camera's got me all messed up. So again, I'm using the Ranger Archival Ink and Coffee. And this is really just a personal preference. It just happens to be what's sitting on my, my workspace while I'm working. So before you glue it, you just want to make sure you get the edges that are going to be um, 
hard to reach once you glue it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do the inside here. And then I'm going to do this bottom flap right here. Now, if you wanted to slide this over top of a, of a, of a hinge, um, you would cut this piece off, and then you would glue it together, and then you would slide that part over the hinge, and then you would attach this piece back down um, to the front side of it, just for the look. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this together. Woo! And I'm using a fiber tack from Beacon, and you just need to place glue on this side, on that flap right there, and close it up. Hold it for a second. And then you want to place glue on the bottom here. I think I need my glue. Let me put the lid on so it doesn't volcano erupt. Just like that. So now you've got a closed envelope. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink the rest okay. of the edges. And so there's the envelope. And then this is uh, one of the large cutoff pieces. Um, and this is the three and a half by 12 inch piece. And there's an insert for this, which I have printed off a couple, but I decided to do a different binding. So I'm going to use my seven gyps gypsies bindery punch. And all I'm going to do is I've made myself kind of a template here. Yes, I have. I'm just going to slide it in here and punch two holes. Oh, let's do it this way. So because I'm using that Seven Gypsies Bindery Punch, the inserts that normally go in here are too big. So, but this piece will fit in just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. So that makes it a three and a half by six inch piece. And if the other ones, let me show you another one. Here's a, a piece that I folded in half. And remember, these have the white backs. They have the white on the back. So I folded it in half and I glued it. So that way it was double-sided. So, oh, not there. It didn't go there. So, um, so with this piece, I don't need to glue it in half. I'm just going to cut it. I should probably use my paper trimmer, but my camera is acting really strange, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm just trying to hurry here. <laughs> So then I'm going to ink the edges, just like this, and then that will be my insert. I can, I can be more decorative with it. I can add some stuff to it, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to use, since I have these still on my table, I'm going to use these small little Velcro clear dots. Um, let me grab a couple. Is that both sides? No. Here we go. Whoa. And I'm going to put a clear one down onto the where that clasp prints out. You can't even tell I just did that, can you? And then I'm going to put the white one on top of that. And that one's going to go onto the, the white lid there. So I'll sit I'm going to need, I'm going to use these again. So I'm going to move these to the side for just a second. So then I have a really simple closure. Okay. So let me grab a few more things and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the envelopes that I already have prepared, uh, and this is how they're going to go. I've tried to put them in some sort of reasonable order here, and they all have their inserts inside of them, um, but remember I told you I'd already printed off the inserts. Where's my book I just had? Which are page 23. These are the inserts for this envelope. Either one. So, and I'd already printed off one, or two, actually. And so, let me grab that real quick. So, I printed this one off, and then I had printed one in this uh, pretty, whatever this is called. And I actually printed the polka dot on the back of this one. Well, since they were too big to go into the clasp envelope, because of the binding that I'm going to do, I, um, I folded it in half and glued it together. So I took these two pieces and folded it in half, glued it together, and, and well, made a slit first to make a little pocket. So it's just like a flat, it's like a page with a pocket. 
Well, another thing I did was this is uh, the clasp envelope that I printed off into a smaller size, which is this size right here. So if you normally, when you print it, you print it a full size. Well, this one I told it to print five by seven. So I printed two five by sevens. So I did uh, green and purple. So then um, it fits in here and it's even got a little insert. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to show you how I did that really quick. Oh, and this is uh, just one of the cut apart pieces from the paper loan. So instead of wasting these two pages that I already printed off for inserts, I figured this was a, this was a better alternative. Plus I want to give you, oh, and here's that other piece. So I'm just going to put that in as a loose, a loose insert. So here's my little tip. First of all, I'm going to cut this piece off, this top piece here, I'm going to go ahead and cut that bottom part off. And before I trim that out anymore, I'm going to get my fun foam mat back out and I am going to score it down the middle. Be careful not to poke through. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to trim the rest of it off. That way I know for sure that it is completely exactly the same. If I wasn't making this a pocket, I would have already glued it too, probably. Now, depending on how well I scored that, it's how well the trimming... Oh, look! I did really good! Oh, yay! So now I'm just going to decide how deep I want my pocket and I think I made that one kind of shallow. I think I'll go make this one a tall opening, you know, closer to the top. So I'm going to be real careful and I'm only going to go to through half. Um, I can't get in there to see. I hope you can't see me. <laughs> I'm only going to cut to the score mark, hopefully. Yeah. So let me move this again. So it's going to fold like this, and there's going to be where the pocket opens. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue this top part. Mm hmm. I'm going to glue this top part closed. You don't have to use Fabri-Tac. You could use a tape runner if you want to because there's nothing that's going to get stuck on there because the pocket's going the other way. And then you want to close the pocket. Just run and glue the side and the bottom. Just like that. And you notice I inked that edge before I did that. And I have lots of seepage. So there's the pocket. Now I'm going to ink it up all the way around. I did pretty good trimming it out, so I probably wouldn't have to ink it up, but I have everything else, so I might as well do this. So I need my binding rings to be over here. It doesn't look like I cut that very straight. Oh well. So, oh, I'm just going to have to guess here. Since I don't have a template just for that one. Get my thing back out. As long as it's not bigger than the covers, I guess it doesn't matter if it's exactly even. Oh, no, I did it right. <laughs> There's my pocket. Okay, so then I wanted to trim out one of these for you. They're so cute. I love like little mini things. And this paper, I don't know where this cardstock came from. I just got a whole bunch of, um, you know, loose colored cardstock that um, I, when I used to do custom work, I would buy a lot of it. I'd buy it in bulk because I would need a lot of it. So I haven't a clue of what brand it is or where it came from. But it matched the paper perfectly, so. Alright, so 
Oh, same thing. Let me get my fun foam mat out. And I'm going to do the scoring just like I did on the big one. Exactly the same way. And then you just want to... But I keep putting this down like I'm done with it. <laughs> Gosh. Then you want to just go ahead and prep everything. I don't know how much tinier I would want to print this. It would make it more and more complicated the tinier it gets. Let me move this and then I'm going to ink the edges up that are going to be sealed down. I'm going to go ahead and ink this too on the inside. All right, I'll seal it up. This is just so stinking cute. Seal the bottom up. Like that, and I ink the rest of the edges up. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put a closure on this too. What I did was <clears throat> the same Velcro dots. Remember when I did the black one in the other video? I have like um, these Spectre Noir uh, markers, and I have a whole bunch of Pro markers in there. And I was trying to match the right color, so I think I got pretty close. I'm almost positive I did, and I think I'm going to go with that one. You can't hardly even tell it's the same. It's not the same exact color. Where's my... I'm going to put the clear one, and I just colored over top of it. Did I already say that? I'm going to go ahead and put the clear one right over top of that green. And then I'm going to find my scissors, and I'm going to cut it in half because it's just a tiny little thing. So... Come on, let go of me. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the, one, the clear part down over top of that clasp so you can still see it. And then the part that I colored to match, I'm going to put it right over top of there. And then I'm going to close it. Okay. So now I got me a little tiny closure for that, and this member goes into this pocket right here. So cute. All right, now the insert for that. Um, here's the other purple envelope. So what I did was I went in there, I went into my templates, and I printed off the inserts to be the five by seven size, the same size I printed off these little mini clasp envelopes. And so then I cut that out. I'm going to use it as a template. Instead of running the whole thing through the printer, I'm just going to lay it down on this piece of paper that is in the collection. And I'm going to just trace it out. Like that. And I'm going to cut it with my scissors. Oh. Just like that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half just like the insert's supposed to be. And it should fit in here just perfect. And it does. So now I'm going to ink this up all the sides. I'm going to leave it open too so it's like a booklet so you can write like a little secret message in there since it's white. I could have print, sent it through the printer too with the pattern. That's always an option. Sometimes I don't think people think about you know printing a smaller version of the template. It's kind of fun. Oops, since I cracked that a little bit. Alright so then that goes in there. So I'm going to put this template in with my larger templates. And I wrote on there, print it smaller at 5x7. So I know exactly what it is. 
And so this one goes in here. All right, um, I guess I'll just put this somewhere else. Okay, so my original thought for the covers was I wanted to do a burlap cover. I thought the, bo the, bo <laughs> the burlap cover would look really good with this paper line. This is one I made a long time ago with my Southern Charm printable. And it's really cool, and I'll link that video down in the description box below because it's really easy and it's really simple. But I didn't have, um, this one needed a, uh, needed a big 12 by 12 sheet, and you need to glue it together, like fold it in half and glue it together. Well, I didn't have one of those sheets, so I got to brainstorm. And even though this is what I really wanted to do was make these cool burlap covers. Um, so I was looking through my stuff, and I found... Um, this really cool acetate sheet. See that? It's got a chevron on it, and the the paper line has uh, a little bit of a chevron in some of a couple of the papers. But either way, and it's pretty, you know, it's pretty durable stuff. It's not like chipboard or anything. But I thought this is what I want to do. This is what I want to make my covers out of. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this. Um, I think of the best way to do it. I think what I'm going to do is move those out of the way. I think I'm just going to lay my template, my, my cover template, page 38. I'm just going to lay it down and trace it out, I think. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I think that'll work perfect. And then trim it out with my paper trimmer. I'm going to use a Sharpie, so I need to be careful to not go too crazy. I've already cut one of the templates out. So I'm just gonna do one for right now, for right this moment. I'm gonna go ahead and take that plastic sheet off, get my paper trimmer back out. This is called, um, this one is from, oops, Webster's Pages, and it's called Chevron Overlay, and it says something about sweet notes. I guess that was the paper line. It was supposed to come from Allison Kreft Designs. I think I bought all this, again, when I was doing custom work, and I think my local scrapbook store was going out of business. So let's see. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to, well, I didn't draw a very straight line. Let's see if I can do this without cutting through the whole piece. Yeah. Oh, I should have turned that. Oh, look, it fits. It fits. Well, maybe not 100% perfect, but hey, we're going with it. Okay. So let me move this. Another thing I did with this uh, was make some. These were actually, this is the size of the insert. So what I did was I cut a couple out and I'm gonna make some like little divider flip pages. So I cut a couple extra out too. So then I'm gonna go ahead and, whoa, I'm running out of space here, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edges. Now I, did, I experimented to make sure this was gonna work and it did, I was impressed. And it stayed. I don't know if every ink will stay on it, but I'm going to go ahead and do both sides just in case. Since everything else is inked, I'm going to go ahead and ink this one. And then I'm going to get my 750s, Gyp Gypty? Gypsy's Bindery Pen. Where's my uh, thingy? Aha. Uh -huh. Is that it? My template, yeah. So uh, since I don't have one for the cover, for the bindery punch, I'm just gonna guess. Or try to eyeball it. Okay. So now, what I wanna do is, I wanna put some We Are Memory Keepers uh, wide eyelets into the holes just to help it um, be stronger. So I'm just gonna, where's my thing? I'm gonna use the We Are Memory Keepers um, crop it out, and I'm gonna use the tip here and close them up. Or squeeze them, not close them up. 
Wow, that sounds easier said than done, I think, at the moment. <laughs> And it's not too bad on the back side. I mean, it's, it's still got that little bit of a roughness right there, but it's not too bad. Okay. So there is one of my covers, and then here is the back cover. So I've already got those two prepared. And then I'm going to do binder rings. So let's just go ahead and get those out. If I can find them. There they are. I've got these binder rings and they are from Seven Gypsies and they're called Custom Binding Rings. Um, and that's it. That's all they're called. So this is what I'm using. I'm just using white binder rings. And then I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna open them up a little bit and lay the bottom one down like that and maybe the top one up here because I think I want this one to be my first page like that and then I had them in some sort of order I, I know I did I don't know what's happened but that's okay let's go in backwards order Let's do, how would that look? But that's kind of cool. Let's do this in the back. And then, how about this one? And then maybe um, this one? And this one. Oh, you know what? I haven't put anything extra in between there. So, let's put this here. One of my inserts that I turned into a pocket page. And then, let's flip this. And maybe, maybe put this right here. I'm not a big fan of that pattern right there. What about and you can't really see that, can you? Okay. And then flip this. How about this right here? Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to put this here, I think. On that side. Maybe put that there, why not? And that there. And maybe have one right here. Yeah. So I'm just going to close it up. Right? That's cute so far, right? I think so. Oh, did I mess that up? No, but it is sticking up a little bit. You see that little hump right there? Probably. Probably not. I don't know. But so that's pretty sturdy. So I want to do. I want to make the cover prettier. I've already cut apart. Remember my scrapper keeper? I love my scrapper keeper. It's like one of my most favorite organizational tools ever, ever. And I will put a link in the description box below for this video too. Um, but here's all my scraps for that. I've only got a few left from making the inserts and stuff. But here's all the cut apart pieces. Oh, there's a couple big ones in here too. And I might end up using some of the scraps that are in there too. So what I was thinking about is, hang on a minute. I was thinking about using some of these scraps for the cover. And I think I've picked that one already. I think I like, these aren't scraps. These are the cut apart pieces um, that go with the paper line that I've already trimmed out thinking it would be faster to just be able to go through and add stuff. So, I think I want this on the cover. This is what I'm thinking. I want that on the cover, but then I want something underneath it so that it stands out a little bit better. So, I had trimmed up some of these pieces. This was a one of the um, three and a half by 12 inch pieces. Um, you know, your large cutoff piece. So, I thought what I would do is have it like this. 
And I probably should have done that before I put the binder rings on there, but that's okay. Have it like this, and then have this one on the back side, you know, so that you wouldn't just see a big white. But I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pop this up. Yeah, let me grab it. I'm gonna use, this is the 3M foam tape. And I don't normally buy it this huge. And um, it's really hard to handle, <laughs> but <laughs> this stuff is expensive. Like one little package of it is like 10 bucks or something ridiculous. And it, it doesn't go very far. Well, if you see this at the office supply store, it's like 50 bucks, this big old thing. Well, I didn't pay 50 bucks for this. I'm not, I'm thinking I got it at Joann's. I'm not 100% sure, but it was like on sale for like 30. So that was worth it to me. Uh, 50 bucks wasn't worth it to me, but $30 was worth it to me. So since I've got it, I'm going to use it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this uh, top piece up. So I'm just going to, since this is so hard to handle, I'm just going to cut a piece off. <laughs> And I'm just gonna go around the edges. I might go with a piece in the middle because I don't want it to sink. Oh, that was pretty good. Maybe have one more piece in the middle. That wasn't too bad. Okay, now we need to take all this tape out. Whoa. Oh, and I've already inked these pieces up because I was thinking this is what I might want to do. So then I'm just going to make sure there's like a quarter of an inch all the way around. Oop. Some of the tape is peeking out over here. So you just want to add this to the top part here. Quarter of an inch all the way around. That's what it just happened to work out. It was perfect. Those, that three and a half by 12 inch piece was perfect for um, matting these little cut aparts. So I think that would look really good right there. I wish I would have done it before I put my rings on there, but that's okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac glue for this to attach it to the, to the binding. I mean, to the cover. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still fighting my cold. And the weather around here has just been stupid. It just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. Cold and warm, cold and warm. Alright. So I did I did go over the rings just a hair, but I don't care. I didn't want it to be too far over to the edge. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that looks. Okay, so then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add this piece directly over top of where that piece is at. So there's no white space. So I'm just going to go like this. Match it up as best I can. Looks good. I probably could have inked the back side of it just to be sure. That's okay. Now I want to add something here. That's too, that's too awkward looking. I like that one. It says life is good. Life is good. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up and I'm just going to add that to there. I don't think I'm going to could pop it up, I guess. Well, why not, right? Let me get me another piece. There. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Plus, it'll keep it from being too staticky onto the, um, the next page. So, I like that as the cover. I might add some more to it, but for right now, that's just gonna, we're gonna leave it like that. So, I'm gonna see what else I'm gonna do, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna call this one done for now. Isn't that cute? I cut these little hearts out of the paper. They're just um, little freehand hearts. And it says, enjoy the little things on the cover there. My camera's giving me fits and my son's almost home from school, so I'll just do a real quick 
little flip and show you the things that I've added. So I added those cute little hearts. And then you all saw me put that there. And then here's some of the um, cut apart pieces from the paper line that I put in there. Um, I didn't really, everything's got their insert. I didn't decorate every page. I added that little cut apart onto the back side of there with a little bit of that black and white stripe. And then there's some more of those little cut aparts. See, just, and this is all came with the, whoops, this all came with the paper line, so I didn't really have to add anything extra. So that's really cute. And then I put one there. And there's another one of the cut aparts in there. And then there's that envelope. I was going to decorate that, but I couldn't find what exactly what I liked. And then I added to this uh, acetate piece, I added a piece on the front and the back. So that makes it look cute. And then I cut this piece out. It says, do small things with great heart. And it was on a large, it was on the black and white striped background cut apart piece. So I added that to there. I thought that was really pretty sparkly. And then this says, hello friend. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is a tuck spot. And then this says, love you to the moon. Isn't that cute? And that's on the acetate piece. And then on the back side there, I put real life. And I think that's all I did. Oh, and then I added, oh, and there's, I didn't add something to every single side, but, and then I added that, it says the best day. So, and then there's the back cover. So doesn't it look pretty cool? It's pretty simple. I'm sure I'll probably end up doing something more to it with the rings or maybe put a closure on it or something. Um, but that was quick and easy. I literally made this in an hour and a half, including all the filming hiccups and everything. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, uh, ask me in the comments below. I'll put direct links to just about anything I can think of in the description box below. So be sure to check there. And let's see. I've only got one more left out of the DIY, the ultimate DIY scrapbook printable. And that is, um, that is the fancy policy envelope. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but that's the one I've got left. So yeah, let me know what you think. This is really sweet. Well, that's all I got for you now, and I will see you later. Bye.